Okay, so um, good evening, everyone. I um, hope you're all safe and well. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, my name is Christy. I'm one of the connoisseurs here at Panache Cruises. Uh, we're excited today to be able to uh, talk to you about expedition cruising with Aurora Expeditions. Uh, we're lucky to have Jay Turner with us this evening. He's the business development manager for Aurora in the UK. Hello, everyone. <laughs> He's got a wealth of knowledge and passion, um, and I know he can't wait to share it with you all. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about Panache. Um, so we're a fairly new company. However, you may recognize our founder, James Cole. Um, he's been in the industry for many years now. Um, and over the past few months, he's put together a great team of eight expert connoisseurs. We've all worked for him previously, and between us, we've got over 100 years of experience. Uh, as your personal connoisseurs, we'll leave no detail untouched. We're here to make your holiday dreams come true. Um, your wish is our command, and uh, nothing's too much trouble. Um, we're also, we are at all protected, uh, so we've got the ability to tailor make your holiday whilst ensuring that you are fully protected. Uh, you'll never have to wait in a call queue. Uh, to get hold of one of us. If your personal connoisseur isn't available, another member of our excellent team will be on hand to help. Uh, I myself have got uh, around 20 years of cruising experience. I was very young when I started. Um, I love everything about cruising um, and I really love helping others to enjoy all that cruising has to offer as well. Uh, if you do have any questions as we go through the presentation, uh, please feel free to ask them. Uh, there's a, if you hover down at the bottom of the screen, uh, there'll be a chat button that you can press. And we'll try and cover any questions that anyone has at the end of the webinar. Um, so with that, I will hand over to Jay and he'll take you through everything you need to know about expedition cruising. Oh, hello everyone, a very good evening to you all. Uh, thanks very much for, for joining us. It's a, it's a real pleasure. Um, I'm going to take you on a little journey today just to introduce you to our pioneering legacy. And we're going to learn about some of the exciting destinations that we explore. And to finish, I'll give you a bit of a sneak peek of our vessels too. So without further ado, let's begin our adventure today. So I'd like to start today by introducing you to our founders, Greg Mortimer and his wife, Margaret. Greg is a legendary Australian explorer. He was the first Australian to have summited Mount Everest and K2 back in the 1980s without supplementary oxygen. And he's led over 80 expeditions to the polar regions. Greg and his wife, Margaret, were so deeply inspired by these widely remote places that they had experienced, and they wanted to share this with the world. As a result, going back some 29 years ago, they set up Aurora Expeditions with the pioneering ethos of wanting to take small groups to the most pristine and untouched destinations on the planet, but doing it in a way that was very um, responsible and respectful to those environments. Now, over the decades, we've pioneered numerous firsts in the expedition world, including being the first operator to offer many activities such as camping out under the Antarctic night sky in Antarctica, ski mountaineering, sea kayaking, uh, and even polar diving. Our most recent first was in November last year, when we launched our brand new ship called the Greg Mortimer, and this was named in honor of our founder. This is the first vessel ever of its kind in the industry and was purpose designed by our expedition team. You'll notice that the bow of the ship looks quite different. Uh, I like to say it looks a bit like the beak of a toucan or the nose of an aircraft. And this streamlined bow design means that rather than riding up and down swells like you would on a traditional ship in choppy seas, we just carve gracefully through the water much like a, a hot knife through butter. And for you, this means a much more comfortable ride, much faster sailing times as we transition through open sea passages. And it's also some 60% more fuel efficient with an 80% reduction in emissions, even compared to our previous vessel. So we're so, so proud to have uh, pioneered this design. The ship is a beautiful vessel, but at Aurora, we're very much all about getting off for as much as possible. So we like to treat her as a bit of a base camp for exploration. We have a, a fleet of 15 Zodiac rib boats, which you can see on your screen there. And you're gonna be led by our world-class expedition guides on small group excursions to get well and truly off the grid multiple times a day. 
Our expeditions are spontaneous uh, and what we do day to day or even hour to hour is completely down to the local weather, the wildlife, the sea and ice conditions. And this is what makes our expeditions so special. There is no fixed itinerary and no two voyages are, are ever the same, much like the fluke patterning of a humpback whale. And the opportunities day to day for exploration really are endless, but I wanted to give you a, a small taste of some of the experiences you'll enjoy. We'll go out on Zodiac cruises and, and witness ginormous icebergs the size of skyscrapers. Perhaps we'll spot humpback whale breaching from up close. We'll go out in the Arctic and, and go for hikes amongst the spectacular Arctic tundra and observe the beautiful botany and flora of the landscapes. We'll visit remote indigenous communities and see ancient historical sites. Or perhaps we may just sit peacefully on a beach and observe gorgeous gentoo penguins raising their baby chicks. Over the years, we've pioneered many activities in the polar regions. And for an additional charge, we can even offer the rare opportunity to go ski touring in Antarctica, snowshoeing, polar snorkeling and polar diving. We can see those giant icebergs from under the waterline, rock climbing and mountaineering, kayaking peacefully through mirror-like waters, Camping out under the Antarctic night sky, waking up to the pitter patter of penguins in the morning. And if you're feeling really brave, we offer our expeditioners the chance to try a polar plunge, or you can jump off our ship into the freezing cold Arctic or Antarctic waters. And uh, of course, there's absolutely no charge at all for, for this one. So I wanted to give you a bit of an overview as to, to where we explore throughout the year. We always spend a season from November through to March down in Antarctica, which is a, effectively the Antarctic spring and summer. Most of our voyages depart from Ushuaia, which is located at the very southern tip of Argentina that you can see on your map there. And from here we cross the fabled Drake Passage, which takes us around one and a half days before arriving into the magical South Shetland Islands and the Antarctic Peninsula, which we'll explore in depth. We also have extended trips to include the Falkland Islands and the wildlife mecca of South Georgia before then heading down to Antarctica and then back up to Argentina. If you're perhaps a little nervous of sailing, we also offer our Antarctic Express itineraries where we can fly directly from Punta Arenas in Chile um, to meet, uh, and we'll fly from directly, sorry, from Punta Arenas in Chile into King George Island uh, down in the South Shetlands. And that's where you're gonna meet the ship before we begin our adventures. And we'll then explore that kind of west coast of the peninsula that's sticking out there. Now, this is our Spirit of Antarctica uh, itinerary, just to give you a feel for some of the voyages that we have. So if you're looking for a real classic bucket list voyage to Antarctica, where you'll stand amongst the incredible penguin colonies and see gigantic ice sculptures, you might see the humpback whale and leopard seal, this would be the perfect adventure for you. It's worth noting that we have multiple departures throughout the Antarctic spring and summer months. And our 12 day voyages here are typically one and a half days longer um, down in, uh, with more time down in Antarctica than compared to, to other operators, which gives you more chance to, to get out into the icy world. And here are just a few of the things that you might see. I so say we'll go for wonderful hikes and actually set foot on the Antarctic Peninsula, which is for many one of the ultimate bucket list things to say you've, you've done. We'll see thousands of penguins, including gentoo trend penguins, chin straps, uh, and the very cute Adelis, which are my particular favorites. We'll visit ancient historic sites and research huts. This was a photo that I took of Demoy Hut uh, in Antarctica. And this is actually used as a, a British summer air facility. It's where they would transit scientists to the various research bases back in the, the 1970s. And it's amazing, you go inside and they've still got old cans of custard and bovril tins in there from, from all those years ago. It's, it's quite a special experience. And early in the season, you'll also with fortune get to see the most spectacular sunsets. Uh, this is a, the picture I took from my first evening down in Antarctica. And, 
really the mountains and the glaciers just illuminated in the most beautiful pink colors. It's totally magic. And there are of course lots of opportunity for spotting seals, the crab eater and Weddell seal. Um, and this is the first lazy chap that, that I spotted on my first morning in Antarctica. For the ultimate adventure, if you do have time, South Georgia is an absolute must. Our voyages tend to be between 21 and 25 days in length, uh, and they will include um, South Georgia, the Falklands and the Antarctic uh, Peninsula all in one trip. So it's really the ultimate expedition. So why South Georgia? Well, in a nutshell, during the height of the breeding season, South Georgia is home to the highest concentration of wildlife on the planet. So it's like nowhere else on earth. And the landscapes are equally just as, as legendary. Glaciers tumble from every direction and the snowy peaks really do make for stunning contrast against the, the tussock grasses and the rocky beaches and the glacial moraine. And South Georgia is of course rich in polar history. It served as the final stage in Ernest Shackleton's endurance, endurance uh, expedition. Uh, and here we can see our uh, historian Carol recounting tales of that fabled voyage. And we'll visit uh, his gravesite in South Georgia and, and raise a toast to his legacy. And the more adventurous of you, um, we can even op offer uh, the opportunity to, to do a ski mountaineering or mountaineering tour across the whole of South Georgia, um, retracing Shackleton's footsteps. And that's something we, we pioneered. Um, so if you're feeling adventurous and you've got mountaineering or ski touring experience, that would certainly be something to have a look at. Now the wildlife numbers in South Georgia really are staggering. It's home to 2 million fur seal, half of the world's population of Southern elephant seal. Uh, and you might be lucky and see these guys fighting for their harem and each elephant seal weighs 2,500 kilos. So they are absolutely ginormous. And in South Georgia, there are over 30 million breeding seabirds, up to quarter of a million albatross, millions of penguin, including the macaroni, um, the gentoos and kings. And it's really the king penguins that steal the show in South Georgia. And, and for many people, that's the, the real highlight. When you stand in places like St. Andrews Bay or Salisbury Plain, you're gonna stand amongst quarter of a million, 300,000 of these beautiful birds. And unlike the gentoo, the chinstrap and the Adelie penguins that you find on the Antarctic Peninsula, the king penguins have a 14 to 16 month uh, breeding cycle, which means whenever you go, you're always gonna see those kiwi fruit looking chicks right up to the, the beautiful adults with their the lovely uh, yellow plumage. And I, I love this picture. And I think this gives you a, a sense of scale. It really is uh, what we call a, a crowded beach. <laughs> it's spectacular. And that really is what South Georgia is all about. So following the Antarctic season, we then head up to the Northern Hemisphere and we're going to explore the real classic Arctic destinations from May through to September. So we'll go to places such as Greenland, Iceland and the, North, um, the archipelago of Svalbard, which is, uh, belongs to Norway. Now the islands of Svalbard are just 650 miles from the North Pole and they, they cover all of the, the classic Arctic tick boxes and wildlife spotting opportunities in one voyage. So in the far north of these islands, we have places like Moffin Island, which is known as a real wa walrus haul out. Um, and as we go kind of further around again, we have places like Auki Velet, which is a, a very famous bird cliff. We might see thousands of Brunet guillemots and puffins up there. Now we do aim to circumnavigate around these islands, but really it's all down to the pack ice, which decides where we go. But there are hundreds of landing locations out in Svalbard. And again, that's what makes this so exciting. But for many, the, the big draw here is of course, the king of the Arctic. And we'll be keeping all eyes out for the fearsome polar bear. And we benefit from 24 hours of daylight up in Svalbard. So you know, if we spot polar bear at three o'clock in the morning, we'll be sure to wake you up and uh, let you know. One of the new voyages that I wanted to show you today is our Greenland Odyssey itinerary, which is 17 days going out on the 10th of August in 2022. We're gonna be exploring Greenland in more depth than ever before, which is really, really exciting. Now the start of the tour um, will we'll begin in Iceland, and here we're gonna explore 
have a quick tour of the golden circle. So that's where you're going to see um, Gilfoss waterfall. We're going to see those incredible geysers and uh, that real and the tectonic fissures, um, which Iceland is also famous for. But then we think the landscapes are incredible there. And then we head onto Greenland where things just get bigger and better. We arrive on the east coast of Greenland and uh, here you'll see the Watkins mountain range, which is actually the, the highest mountain range uh, in, in the Arctic. And we'll be keeping watch for whales around the clock. As we loop around the south of Greenland up to the northwest, there are many highlights on this voyage, including an exploration of uh, Prince Christian Sound and Tazemirfjord, which is known as the Patagonia of the North. We'll visit the National Museum in the capital of Nuuk. Uh, and here, if we're lucky, we might find 500 year old ancient mummies, which have only really recently been, been discovered and they're perfectly preserved as they've, as they've been frozen uh, in the Arctic uh, tundra. And then we'll push northbound, um, finishing in the World UNESCO heritage site of Illilusat, which is a, a paradise for icebergs. Now, throughout the voyage, we're going to discover remote Inuit communities and really get to see firsthand how these people survive in the harshest wildernesses on Earth, where um, hunting is still uh, very much a way of life and they still use dogs and sledges to, to hunt. In fact, if you go in supermarkets, you'll find that everything is frozen, uh, rifles are hanging up above your, he above your heads. It's, a, it's a, a completely different world to anything that, that we're used to here. And here is a picture I took uh, in Parmute, which is one of the, the many settlements that we'll be exploring along the way. And I actually got ambushed for a, by a very uh, smiley Greenlandic child who uh, decided he wanted a, a piggyback ride with me. <laughs> and it was one of those magical moments that, that I really will never forget. But for me, what makes Greenland is so special is really the sheer scale of the landscapes. There are glaciers oozing from every direction and the icebergs are the size of icebergs. Uh, the, the icebergs are the size of cathedrals and skyscrapers. Now, just to give you a sense of scale, if you're looking at this picture, on the, the ridge there on the, the rock on the left, you'll see some tiny little dots uh, and they are actually people. It gives you a sense of how big the icebergs are in, in Greenland. Now the voyage comes to a very fitting conclusion as we head up to uh, Illilusat, which is home to the Jakobshavn Glacier, one of the most productive glaciers in the Northern Hemisphere. And it, uh, there's about 20 million tons of ice carving off this glacier every single day. So it's moving at 40 meters a day, which is amazing. So we hopefully will see lots of carving there. Uh, and we also have the opportunity to do a helicopter tour there too. So you'll get to see these incredible glaciers from, from up in the air, which I can't think uh, of a more fitting end to, uh, to uh, an itinerary than that. Next, I wanted to uh, introduce you to some of the amazing new itineraries that we have going out in the Russian Far East. And um, we can't wait to explore this area again in summer 2022. The Kamchatka Peninsula is located at the wildly remote far eastern edge of Russia. And it's uh, pretty similar in size to the UK tourists and even Russians themselves were only able to come here um, in the early 1990s following the end of the Cold War. And we're going to be exploring this region on two fantastic voyages in July and August. So we have a, a north and south bound itinerary and we include all the charter flights for you. Now Kamchatka is located deep in the Pacific Ring of Fire, so it's home to over 300 volcanoes of which 29 of them are still active. And the volcanoes are listed as World UNESCO Heritage Sites. So they're some of the most visually spectacular that you'll find anywhere on Earth. And some of them, I think, are up to 15,500 feet in size and they still smoke on top. But Kamchatka really is a, a dream for nature lovers. It's home to more than an astonishing 10,000 brown bear, which is one of the highest densities uh, on the planet. And thanks to the abundance of salmon, which inhabit the waters and the rivers here, they are the most well-fed bears on earth, so they're, they're huge, uh, but uh, they do have compete to compete for lunch sometimes with some stellar sea eagles, which often soar menacingly overhead. On this itinerary, we're gonna be launching the Zodiacs and exploring the very seldom and very remote uh, uh, Commander Islands, which is actually nicknamed the South Georgia of the Pacific Ocean. Over 200 species of bird have been recorded here, and we hope to spot red-faced cormorants, whiskered orklets, albatross, uh, and these very comical uh, tufted puffins. I have to say, I, I love their peroxide hairdos. 
tens of thousands of fur seal haul out on the beaches in this region. And throughout the voyage, we're going to keep watch for sea lions and sea otters. And we hope to spot some of the giants of the ocean too, such as orca, blue whale, fin and humpbacks. We love all things cultural here at Aurora too. So we hope to visit the remote village of Timlat, where the indigenous Koryak people are gonna welcome us on arrival with celebratory song and dance on arrival. So this is a, such a special experience, an incredible itinerary. So continuing our theme in the Russian Far East, high above the Arctic Circle and north of Kamchatka, on the roof of the world lies the wildlife mecca of Wrangel Island. It's one of the least explored wildernesses on earth and we have a very rare opportunity and special permission to explore here on two departures going in July and in August 2022. As we set foot ashore and go for hikes in the tundra, we step back in time um, by hundreds of thousands of years to experience a world that was completely untouched by glaciation and it's frozen in time so today this means when we're walking on beaches, you just never know, we might even still spot the remains of fossilized woolly uh, mammoth tusks, um, which can be found littered on some of the shores. But the big draw here for, for many um, has to be the wildlife. Wrangell Island um, Nature Reserve is it's home to an abundance of wildlife that's really off the scale. And if you want to see the king of the, the Arctic, this is the place to be. Wrangell Island is often called a polar bear maternity ward. There are about 400 mothers giving birth here each year, so we hope to have multiple polar bear encounters. And we're going to keep watch for many of the other Arctic giants, the muskox, Arctic fox and reindeer, and um, one of my favourites is the Pacific walrus. Now each of these walrus weighs uh, up to two tonnes, and it's been known for staggering 100,000 of them to haul out in the beaches in Wrangell Island, um, which is quite a sight and smell admittedly <laughs> to behold. And bird enthusiasts will love Wrangell Island with over 100 migratory birds, um, including snowy owl, snow geese and long-tailed skewers that we hope to spot here. On this voyage, we'll have time to explore the remote Chukotka coast as well, and perhaps we'll see um, beluga and humpbacks feeding, and we'll experience a traditional Chukki life before returning to Alaska. Um, and we include all the charter flights just to make everything nice and easy for you. So speaking of Alaska, in summer 22, far away from the world of those gigantic cruise ships, we're going to get really intimate um, with this epic wilderness. We're going to be exploring um, Alaska on four different voyages, uh, and I wanted to pick one of these uh, just to show you in more depth today. This is our Alaskan Odyssey itinerary, which starts in Vancouver. We're going to work our way up the inside passage and get deep in the fjord systems, uh, finishing in Seward. And on this voyage, we're going to get to meet First Nation Metlakatlan Indian communities on Annette Island. And we're going to see their intricate carvings, canoe building skills and huge totem poles, which dep depict ancient um, historical moments uh, in the Metlakatlan history. We'll get deep into the Misty and Tracy Arm Fjord systems and we'll, in see, we'll see incredible glaciers up close from our zodiacs. There'll be lots of opportunities to hike amongst beautiful mountainous valleys. We'll see spectacular waterfalls and temperate rainforest. Now you might have noticed some of the additional add-on activities there. We have the opportunity to go snorkeling and, and diving uh, in Alaska as well, which might sound a bit chilly but we do provide all the gear to keep you nice and warm but under the water you can see huge colorful anemones, sponges, seals, fish, crabs uh, and with luck maybe the uh, giant Pacific octopus. I wanted just to show you a couple of images just to give you a, a feel for the scenery that we'll explore on our adventure. This is Misty Fjords National Monument which is known as the Yosemite of the North and you can see why it's surrounded by those giant cliffs. So they're 3000 foot high and we have glaciated valleys in all directions. And it's a wonderful spot for observing wildlife. So we'll be keeping watch for many seabirds, but most famously are the grizzly bears and black bears. One of the highlights of this expedition is that we get to spend two days in the vast Prince William Sound. Now, sometimes cruise ships can only spend 30 minutes here. Um, so, and this is home to the most tidewater glaciers than anywhere else on earth. So 
with a bit of luck, we'll get the zodiacs and kayaks out and we might see uh, some of those giant glaciers carving ice. And this is Kayak Island, a very remote and uninhabited area of Alaska. It's famous for being the location where the first European explorer and naturalist George Steller set foot uh, on Alaska back in the mid uh, 1700s. And he was a real pioneer of Alaskan natural history. And even today, so few people get to set foot ashore here. It's a very wild environment. It's very exposed to all the uh, elements. So it's just the kind of place that gets us really excited. And just to note a few of the, the wildlife uh, highlights that we get to see along the way. We might see humpback whales. We hope to spot them um, bubble net uh, feeding. We'll see hopefully some adorable sea otters. The classic symbol of America, the bold headed eagle. We hope to spot some of the brown coastal bears and the Stella sea lion named in honor of George Stella, who we just mentioned. And if we're lucky, you might even see orca spy hopping as well. Now, moving on to the Northwest Passage, I have to say that voyages don't get any more epic and rich in polar history than the Northwest Passage. For hundreds of years, this region captivated all of the great explorers, such as Franklin and Amundsen. They were desperate to find that route that would allow ships to sail from Europe to East Asia on a much shorter path. But it's a, a real extreme labyrinth of continually moving pack ice up there. And it wasn't until just over 100 years ago in 1906 that Roald Amundsen finally cracked it. And we have two expeditions that operate in the very short window that these voyages can actually take place due to the ice. And we're gonna go out in August and September 22. So we have both the west and the reverse eastbound itinerary, which include charter flights for you to get to this really remote region nice and easily. I'll focus on the, the westbound voyage today. We start our exploration in West Greenland and we're gonna push through vast fjord systems towards the UNESCO heritage site of Ilulissat in Disco Bay. And that's the area we touched upon earlier with that giant glacier with those icebergs that are a kilometer in height. And en route to the Northwest Passage, we'll enjoy amazing views of the huge rock slabs of Baffin Island, which is a mountaineer's paradise. And we're gonna keep watch for various species of whale as well as the ring and harp seal we find up there. And at 75 degrees north, we'll get out hiking on Devon Island in the high Arctic, which is the world's largest uninhabited island. And here we'll learn lots about the geology of the landscape. It's fascinated scientists for decades as it's a desert setting and its harsh climate is very similar to conditions that are actually found on Mars. Conditions allowing, we also hope to spot ancient Thule ruins and perhaps we'll see uh, walrus hauled out in Dundas Harbor. Now, as we enter the, the Northwest Passage, we enter the rich waters of an area called Lancaster Sound, which is known as a wildlife superhighway. The region has the second highest density of polar bear population on the planet. So with the long daylight hours to play with, again, we hopefully, hopefully we're gonna spot the uh, awesome predators um, looking, uh, scouring the shores for, for prey. At Cunningham Inlet, we hope to spot the ever playful beluga whale. About 2,000 uh, beluga whale come to these shallow waters to raise their young and to shed their skin in their, in their annual molt. So it's one of the few places on earth that you may see them in such abundance. And uh, if you love birds, you'll be in your element as we'll explore vast cliffs home to up to 400,000 migratory birds up in Prince Leopold Island. Occasionally, uh, our polar bear friends can be found in this region. Unfortunately, looking for a, an unsuspecting bird to snack upon. And close to Leopold Island, we hope to make a landing at Beachy Island, which is home to the graves of some of John Franklin's men. And it's one of the many historical highlights uh, on this expedition. And I think this picture really captures the magic and the allure of the Northwest Passage. We may get very lucky and spot the unicorns of the sea, the beautiful narwhal who are great, migrate through the channels here. And as we head onwards to our final destination, Cambridge Bay, we'll get our zodiacs out multiple times a day to really unlock the secrets of the Northwest Passage with our expert guides. There are so many unknowns to this voyage, which for me makes this a, a really exciting expedition, but one of the highest caliber 
So I have to say, uh, roll on summer 2022. Now we do also explore some of the warmer climates that are far away from it all and very much off the grid. Uh, in 2022, we're also gonna be going to the marine paradise of Raja Rampat and the West Papua Islands, which is in Eastern Indonesia. And we're also gonna be going to the Baja California and the Sea of Cortez in Mexico. And that's where we're gonna to get to see again some really pristine coral reef systems uh, and protected hope spots in honor of Sylvia Hill, who we're just going to touch upon in just a moment. So whilst we're all about getting immersed um, into the destinations as much as possible at Aurora, I wanted to give you a sneak peek of our home from home for you today. There are panoramic observation decks all over the ship with unobstructed views. And you have the, we have these very special hydraulic platforms which pop out from the, the bow of the Greg Mortimer. And we can see these amazing panoramas. We have four sea level Zodiac launch platforms, so two on both sides of the ship. This means we can get into the Zodiacs very quickly and safely, so we don't miss out on those spontaneous events such as humpback whales breaching. To the rear of the ship, there is a specially designed activity pontoon, again, the first of its kind in the industry. And this is where we can safely launch our diving and kayak operations. No longer do we have to try and get in and out of Zodiacs and into a, a kayak, which I can say from past experience was, was rather tricky. <laughs> and just to give you a, a brief glimpse of the interior of the ship, here is our very relaxing and uh, relaxing polar library. It's a, a very calm space. And uh, I think it gives you a real sense of the decor scheme that we find throughout the ship. This is our lecture theater where our world-class expedition guides will talk about their specific areas of expertise and really bring a, a deeper understanding of the world outside from my marine biology to glaciology, polar history, ornithology, and we'll also have photography uh, workshops too. And true to our Australian roots, our team are all very warm and approachable on board. Our guides will always join you in the bar and sit with you at dinner. We're always on hand to answer any questions. So we're very popular with both uh, groups and solo travelers alike. And there's certainly no dressing up on our ships. It's all very relaxed and, and very casual. We want you to be ready for the great outdoors. Following a day's exploration and a cheeky nightcap, you'll want to retire to one of our lovely balcony cabins. And uh, most of the, the cabins on the ship do actually have balconies, um, but you'll notice again, there's a very soft and neutral decor scheme. And this has been deliberately intended as we don't want anything to detract from these beautiful environments that we're in. And after a good night's sleep, you'll certainly be uh, raring to go for an inspiring day of new adventures. And so successful has the launch of Greg Mortimer been. We do have a new vessel all on schedule to launch in November next year called the Sylvia Rill. And it's named in honor of the world famous oceanographer and explorer. And we're gonna be visiting some of those uh, destinations which she's um, been instrumental in protecting uh, that we touched upon earlier. Now, both of our ships are sister ships, so one isn't better than another, but the Sylvia Earl um, has a couple of different features. In the, the bow of the ship, you'll see there the double deck uh, atrium and lounge area, which will also have a very interesting science center. So we get to do lots of studies when we're out at sea. And we'll also have a heated, heated infinity swimming pool at the rear of the ship. And we have some fantastic news for you all today. We are officially launching our Arctic and Global 2022 program tomorrow. So that's all of those wonderful itineraries we've touched upon, including Alaska, the Russian Far East, and the Northwest Passage. For launch, for booking early with us, you'll be treated to discounts of up to an amazing 25% off for these Arctic and Global 22 season. And at Aurora, you know, we do really value those that book early with us. So we always offer our best pricing at launch uh, and we have done historically for the 29 years that we've been around. We're not a company that slash our prices at the last minute and that's really important to us. You know, our, our ships are small. We're on average just 132 guest capacity. So we do sell out often 18, 20 months prior to departure. 
Uh, and booking early also ensures that you can get your preferred choice of cabin uh, and voyage, uh, of course. And in light of the current climate, we've also launched our industry leading booking with peace of mind policy, which you can see on our, our website, rawexpeditions.co.uk. So there's lots of booking flexibility for you prior to departure in relation to COVID-19. And I also wanted to mention that for any payments made to us through Panache, they're all 100% protected through our deposit protection program. So all funds that we receive are placed into a separate trust fund that we call an escrow account for your financial security and peace of mind. So it's certainly a wonderful time to be planning your next adventure with us. Uh, and we look forward to welcoming you aboard and join our, joining our expedition family. So thank you uh, for joining us all at Aurora today, but please don't um, visit, hesitate to reach out to the Panache team, of course, if you do have any questions. And I'm just gonna pass you back over to the wonderful Christy. Thank you, Jay. That was a brilliant insight into expedition cruising and into Aurora. I know you've made me want to uh, go already and I just need to figure out where now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest challenge. <laughs> yeah, so much to choose from. Um, you must have been very thorough because we haven't had any questions come through. Um, but if anyone does think of anything that they want to ask Jay, uh, just drop me an email um, after the webinar and I will happily pick his brains for you. Um, yeah. <laughs> we do have as well for anyone attending the webinar um, this evening and also for those who were unable to attend but asked for the present presentation to be sent to them, um, we've got a special offer uh, exclusive to Panache. So if you book through us and um, for an Aurora expedition between now and the 7th of December, you'll receive $200 on board credit uh, to use whilst on your voyage. Um, I, we, uh, sorry, um, we'll be in contact with you all very soon. Um, but if you do feel ready to book now, uh, if you know you've been able to choose from those, all those itineraries, which one you'd like to go on, um, or if you'd like about anything in more detail, drop me an email or give me a call on my number which is on the screen um, and I'd love to speak with you. So thank you Jay and thank you everyone for joining and um, I look forward to speaking to you all soon. Have a good thank day. you everyone thanks for joining us. Bye. Take care.